Everybody, welcome back to Automate Live. I'm Wynn Harden from Manufacturing Matters, and today I am blessed enough to be sitting here with award-winning industrial software executive and group president at Teradyne Robotics, Ujwal Kumar. Ujwal, thanks for taking time out of this busy day to come join us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Our pleasure. So before we get deep, why don't you tell us a little bit about Teradyne Robotics, yourself, anything in your background you'd like to share? Perfect. So uh, I'm group president for Teradyne Robotics. Uh, in our portfolio, we have uh, uh, Universal Robots, the um, world's largest collaborative robot uh, company, and uh, um, Mobile Industrial Robot, the um, uh, AMR uh, company. Yes, sir. We, um, uh, we are uh, one of the leading AI-based advanced robotics platforms globally. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you you guys are actually here. And you did mention Universal Robotics and Mir? Correct? And Mir, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, what does it mean for Teradyne to be here at Automate this year as well as yourself? And we'll get into it a little bit later, but keynote address on Thursday. I can't wait to hear that. So um, it, it was interesting for us to see that we have the largest booth at the show ah okay um and um, go big or I, go home you know <laughs> it, it's um, i think it speaks volume of where the advanced robotics uh, industry is today yes um it's um, we are at the cusp of uh, some very exciting software based and ai based uh, solutions which are coming to scale yeah i'll be Speaking about uh, some of this uh, during my keynote on Thursday, right? Uh, where the key focus is on helping our industrial customers understand what is a tech hype, uh, science fiction versus scalable solutions. Exactly. Uh, are, are there any key tips that you want to offer for people who are trying to sort through what's possible and what's reality today? So, um, I'll. Before answering this, that question, I'll just say that I have been on the other side of several other people uh, uh, here at uh, Automate. Right. I uh, started my career at General Motors. Um, then I was at GE for 10 years, then Honeywell for seven years. Yes. I've run these kind of factories where we need that next level of uh, automation. Yeah. And what I have seen is uh, we have a lot more variability in our factories than in the past. Uh -huh. So we need the kind of solution which is a standard solution which can handle that variability to have the right uh, return on investment. Right. And Is we, this like an offshoot of flexible manufacturing when you talk about that variability or just yeah, know, so high turnover? Like objects? a more software-based um, um variability handling rather than designing a custom design perfect robotics for every application right which we have been used to which i am used to for last uh, 25 years and the world has been used for last 50 years yes now we can go with go with more standard collaborative uh, uh, robots and amrs with the variation handled by uh, the software and we, as the industrial world, we badly, we were waiting for this kind of revolution. Yes. Right. Where hardware becomes more ubiquitous and we're really differentiating a lot by the application, the software envelope that's wrapping around that work so. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. giving it so much more power and capability. Um, so uh, you mentioned, you know, you've been in manufacturing and you've mentioned the trend towards higher mix or um, flexible manufacturing. And I'd love to get deeper in a whole other conversation about retasking and everything down the road. But are there any other key trends that you're focused on right now uh, beyond this uh, just pivotal moment in robotics and automation tech? So one is uh, how do we bring in standard solutions to solve these age-old problems in the manufacturing space. Right. The second one which we are very intimately involved in is uh, um, several of our customers and countries are keen to bring manufacturing. So including uh, here in U.S. Right. We uh, want, we dream of this renaissance of uh, manufacturing, reshoring, mm -hmm. and one of the things I'm involved in is to bring manufacturing back, we will need to bring our workers back. 
and we'll need to bring the investors back. Right. We will not be able to bring the workers back to the kind of factories we have today. Exactly. We'll have to make it a lot more high tech, quieter, cleaner, Absolutely. more smarter. Yes. To attract this new generation of workers. Agreed. Agreed. To bring the investors back, uh -huh. we'll need to um, drive next generation of cost competitiveness for our factories. And we as the robotic industry, we have the solution for both of those. So I feel that uh, um, this new generation of advanced robotics is critical for us to drive reshoring, nearshoring, and to bring manufacturing in every parts of the world where our customers want it. I couldn't agree more because the technology brings that culture that the new generation wants, right? It, it's not your it's not your father's manufacturing industry anymore. Yes. So, uh, and then of course you have the ability for automation to bring more capability, more flexibility, and help to balance those labor costs, right? That we see differences around the world. So I'm I'm totally getting the vibe where you're going from there. Um, are, what are the biggest challenges facing manufacturers right now? Beyond this interesting moment in time that we happen to be in, where there's a lot of shifting around the globe. Sure. So, yeah, I will not get into the tariff-related uncertainty which we have. I think the biggest, uh, like, two things which the manufacturers I talk to, they ask for. Number one is we are facing unprecedented labor shortages. Yes. Like, we have uh, 20 per, like, one in five jobs uh, missing in the manufacturing world. Right. And it is difficult to attract the new generation of workers there. Yes. The second one is uh, the manufacturers are looking for those scalable solutions. Mm -hmm. They uh, There is some uh, confusion with, uh, say, they're saying, should I jump to these humanoids? And yes. I immediately say, I used to run the factory which you're talking about. Right. Let's not start with the form factor. Yes. Tell me about your problem. Right. The t uh, Tell me about the function which you want to be solved. Yes. What form factor, which technology is best suited to meet your need? That comes later. Yes. And we as an industry, we need to stay focused on solving those customers' problem in a scalable way. Right. Rather than confusing the market with form factor like, oh, it should look like a human being or a dog or a horse or whatever absolutely which you know still has uh, humanoid robotics growth is just super interesting without question we've got battery density issues we've got some other things that are going to help that scale up you know so that's going to be interesting so you mentioned um uh we're talking about the challenges that manufacturing's are faced what sort of advice would you give to someone to, looking to adopt their first automation solution how, how should they get started so um I would, number one thing I would say is clearly lay out what your problem is. Yes. And um, realize that we may have our bias about automation with the kind of automation we all have seen for the last 50 years, mm -hmm. which is, again, the world I come from. Right. There is a new generation of advanced robotics, which is game-changing from return on investment and time it takes to deploy and redeploy point of view. Right. So we need to um, look at how we will solve those problems in newer ways. You know, it's interesting, back in the day, not too long ago, if you were looking at different robotic solutions, you mainly focused on payload, right, based on the application. But there's a, there's a, such a more diverse portfolio of robotic solutions. You mentioned some of them, the AMR pedestals, you know, autonomous forklifts, uh, traditional robotic arms, gantries. So, I, you know, I think that that's such an important takeaway. Look at the application first. Always start with the specification so you don't over-engineer the system. But Absolutely. at least be aware that you're going to have the flexibility with this automated solution to adapt as your manufacturing changes change over time. No, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've um, talked a little bit about Teradyne today. Uh, you are, Universal Robots and Mir, um, they talk a lot about ecosystems, and it, which I think is brilliant because manufacturing used to suffer from a collaboration deficit, yes. you might say. But how is that changing in your So I, well? I think uh, we in the manufacturing world, uh, most of the OEMs, we always started with owning all the technology in-house. Yeah. And we have we always had behemoths who 
would like to own the full technology stack. Right. The world has fundamentally changed. There is no company out there who will be able to bring in the best sensing technology to the best AI to right. edge analytics, um, your robotic arm. Like, yeah. You need to create uh, an ecosystem through which um, everyone feels like they are bringing in their respective innovation into the mix. Right. And that is what makes uh, you are and Mir very special in the market from the time of inception. It has always focused on open API, open uh, platform, right. which brought in the kind of innovators whom in the last industrial revolution, we we forgot about them or we said they were too small. They were startups. They, are, um, they will not be able to scale up. Yes. We have to give them an, a platform through which we will be able to scale up those technologies to global scale. And this is exactly what you are and Mir is doing. That's it is the world's largest innovation platform for AI-based advanced robotics. To me, these seem connected to other trends in the industry. You know, manufacturers, for one, never wanted to let data go outside the firewall, yes. right? And then now we have artificial intelligence, deep learning models that need a whole lot of data to be very efficient and effective, Absolutely. right? And we never wanted to, you know, let open ports from the industrial network out past the building. Um, so, you know, but then cloud services came in and started to show the capabilities of these systems. So it's like on a technology side, we're embracing a collaboration moment. And then also, of course, on the organizational business side with certain leading companies like Teradyne, Mir, and Universal Robotics um, are, are, are mirroring that. It just seems like everything is changing at once and coming together like, like, like teeth in a comb, you know, kind of thing. Like when, when I think of Big players we are collaborating with, okay. uh, like NVIDIA, we have, we work on bringing in new AI based solutions together. We have, uh, we are partnered with Siemens to bring in new solutions for the industrial world. Uh, we just announced our uh, collaboration with Honeywell uh, last week. Outstanding. Um, um, Matthews International, uh, we announced in February ADI in the semiconductor space. Like all these big players, the reason they want to collaborate is they see their unique role in shaping this industry. The kind of solutions we can bring to the market. Again, right. no one company will be able to create that, uh, drive that leapfrog, right. which this industry needs. Absolutely. Which we are able to bring in. And I'll uh, just uh, highlight... Uh, one of the news which intrigued me a lot uh, last week, um, uh, Amazon, uh, they had uh, announced this Vulcan program last week, which I f thought was an absolute uh, AI integrated breakthrough in the market, which we always thought was uh, sci-fi. Like if something like that had come out five years back, uh, we would say, okay, this is, we are just imagining. Right. And uh, in that article, uh, Amazon themselves, they say that uh, they thought this problem was impossible to solve five years back. So the pace of innovation has changed. Massive. It's um, Massive. massively yes. like this from an idea concept to scalable deployed solutions. Right. Exactly. We are at the forefront of, uh, I call it industry 5.0. So with the pace of change, you, you went perfectly in a segue to my next question. The pace of change is accelerating so fast. I mean, what would you tell manufacturers that they should focus on in terms of developing an automation strategy, say, over the next three years? Because a lot's going to happen in the next three years. You know? so I, I would uh, encourage everyone to go in the market. First, lay out your problem statement and look for a standard solution. You want to do a welding application or palletizing, screw driving, it, like whatever is your application, don't try to custom design the perfect solution for that application. Right. With so much innovation going on in the market, focus on the platform, which gives you the best scalability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ujwal, it's been a pleasure to talk with you today. I can't wait to see your keynote on Thursday morning. So I hope everyone can join us for that event. But until next time, I hope you have your best automate ever. And uh, I hope we get to talk again really soon. Great. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. 
Thank you, everybody.